Hi all. Today I'm walking on ice. Not thin ice. It's pretty solid as a matter of fact. Way out there. Enjoying the sun. Contemplating uh, the next bogeyman we get fed in the news. Russia! You know, first of all, I feel bad for the people of Ukraine. I don't think there's a country in Europe that has been, excuse my French, fucked over so repeatedly, so, uh, you know, <laughs> to the bone, time and time again. And, you know, if it wasn't on the news, you guys wouldn't give a about it. I know. I think uh, last year around this time, I made a posting about the Holodomor. You know what that is? Did you check it out? Holodomor, you should check it out. It's uh, the Ukrainian Holocaust before uh, the beginning of the First World War. And Stalin uh, committed atrocities. Uh, he, he took out all the grain uh, of the nation, uh, sold it to the West on the capitalist market uh, and uh, let them starve because they were not you know, being good little lapdogs of the Soviet system, I suppose. Whatever. That opened the door to Nazism. When the Nazis came, you know, it's a... <laughs> It's a really big story, but you sh maybe you should I take this history lesson now. Uh, uh, well, yeah, so it sucked being in Ukraine in uh, the late 30s. Uh, people are, were barely scraping by. The Soviet system, the communist system, of course, it doesn't work because communism never works. Never works. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that never works, uh, because I'm I'm not here to take sides here, because I see there's there's two sides to the story, and uh, Ukraine is right there in the middle, getting hit from both sides. So yeah, I, I stand with the people of Ukraine for sure, uh, but also with some modifications. Uh, I think it was in 1991, uh, NATO signed a, an agreement with the Russians that they would not expand beyond uh, eastward of Poland or something. This has happened repeatedly again and again, and the Russians have said, hey, you, we have a, an agreement and you are moving closer. It's just an inch. It's just another inch. I mean, you all know this. Grandmaster Flash tune um, the message. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, um, when you got this big bear in the east that you keep pushing against, <laughs> and for that matter with NATO, uh, the only things you pushed against before were tiny little defenseless basically banana republics like uh, Serbia like Libya I don't know uh, say Syria to some extent what a mess we make Do, uh, but we don't look in the mirror we are just going up oh the news says rah 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 go against Russia we are so fair and square here in the west we know diplomacy and we know it doesn't work so we just start kicking Ah, it's so annoying, you know, this lack of perspective. So if you got an, uh, you know, if you know any time in history, the West succeeded in moving east to Moscow and it didn't end up in a bloody slaughter. Yo, let me know. I, I'd be interested to learn that story. You know, I'm a Norwegian. Uh, even here, uh, the Second World War, the, the, 
the Russians came to the north in Finnmark with some really ill-equipped Norwegian troops. Some of them were even barefoot and they had a rifle to share and they had to share the ammunition. I mean, it was it's a sad story. Thor Heyerdahl talks about it in one of his books. You should check that out. I think it's a self-biography, if I remember correctly. And so, <laughs> Germany has invaded us like a thief in the night. I mean, I, I hinted at that earlier. The story into itself. And it gains a bit more. I mean, it's, it's pretty... Uh, today, what's happening today, it's a bit of the same because it's... What happened with the, uh, Germany invading with Barbarossa, uh, invading Russia, was that they needed oil uh, for their tanks, they needed fuel for their tanks, for their uh, Wehrmacht, so they could continue, uh, you know, invading and making war. Uh, it's not exactly what's happening today, but maybe it's like a soft thing of it. Uh, Germany needs energy and it it eats energy. I, it's insane. We're here in Norway, in Norwegian prices of electricity have just soared through the ceiling because our politicians are always reliably corrupt politicians ready to flush her down the toilet. Um, says that, that we want to sell our, all, all our electricity, that we have the grid that's built by taxpayer money. The stations that are built by taxpayer money, we privatized it, and uh, now the private companies want to sell to Germany because you get better prices. It's yeah, we do that. We want to join the European nation. We, the politicians, want to. People said nay many times. That's what we are looking for, politicians that are uh, willing to stand by that. To remain, that we want to remain sober. So, yeah, so that's... Uh, and this energy question uh, is, is solvable. Uh, we know that. I, I push that. Uh, I even uh, uh, just... Just again, a couple of weeks ago, I made contact with one of the leading wind energy developers here in the country. That, uh, yo, we have a solution here. It's a patent that it is recognized, and it's, uh, but it needs funding. And you get this out of pocket. Uh, so, yeah, and we don't need to. We have this. It's perfection windmills. Uh, you cannot get any better. And. No, we don't even want to look at it. So I mean, that's that's not the way of. That's not how innovation works. It works by being curious. It works by being open-minded about things. So um, I mean, until people are willing to do that, want to look at the solutions, we are just going to keep digging a, a a deeper hole here. Unfortunately, and it seems people are happy with. They're, they just love their misery, so we're not going to look at the solutions. Hey, uh, but this is what I tell you. The agitating against East now, against Russia. Oh, you say the, 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 the Russians are the aggressors? Eh. I'm not going to put too fine a point on it, because the, the, this I've not looked to through in depth and I doubt you have also uh, but I know one thing uh, when when Hitler uh, started Barbarossa Stalin didn't understand anything it took several weeks maybe even a few months before it rang home to him that uh, the Germans were invading. And this was not just the Germans, it was a big multicultural army consisting of, you know, Romanians, Albanians, uh, Bulgarians, all the people, and Polacks that had been 
and this to through the German Wehrmacht. We see now uh, we are we are sending weapons to Ukraine. There's a lot of things that reminds me. It's not exactly the same, but it reminds me of the Barbarossa operation. It's the same uh, pinch uh, maneuver that we are using. But we're going to see. I mean, I, I don't think uh, Bulgaria is going to play along on this stuff. I think there are several countries that are not going to play along. Serbia, for sure, is not going to play along. That was a big factor, uh, as a matter of fact, that uh, Baba also failed in the first place. Was when uh, the Serbs just didn't buy that uh, they were had been taken by the Nazis. They went out to the streets in 1941 when the Germans were winning everywhere. No, we would rather die than being slaves to you. That upset Hitler a lot. That uh, upset the Wehrmacht a lot. And Hitler had to divert like 500,000 of his troops to deal with the situation in Yugoslavia at the time. 500, that's a half million troops that he likely needed a lot on the Eastern Front. And maybe with that another, with that uh, half a million troops, he would have made it into Moscow. Who knows? But the Russians burned Moscow. They gave the Nazis the, their capital, but they burned it. They took all the supplies. They starved the Germans to death. So, I mean, uh, I mean, just before you take sides here, do catch up a little bit on history and yeah. go with the wind that's all I'm saying just think also uh, the faith of so many of the those people that enlisted back then because they wanted to fight Russia when they got home, they were tarred and feathered as Nazis, not as brave soldiers. Could this happen again today? I doubt it not. I see how malleable people are to just go with any story that they're being pushed. Sure. Would you like to be that uh, guy? I hope not. I hope not for your uh, for your sake. War is a bad thing, and I just said in a video not too far ago, when emperors declare war, good people die on both sides. That's something that our politicians seems always forget to mention. It's good people on both sides. It's just nutty leaders. So, yeah, I just wanted to give that message. I, I, I've been mulling about on it and thinking a lot about it, and I just have to say it. Now I've recorded it out on the ice there. I see some people over there out having a picnic. Young kids, nice summer dog. Enjoying the day. It's the 1st of March. Tomorrow is new moon. It's thawing. I said there will not be a lot of winter. You should see in a couple of weeks. I've signaled already that I think there's going to be a change there. Lasting at least for a month and a half, but we shall see. I'm curious myself. I'm thinking about it a lot. Uh, well, that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Um, join in a comment if you uh, if you're a hater, you know what do I care? Just b keep believing the stories you're being spoon fed. I just wanted to give you another take on it that you're not going to get on the news or in the news media. So, yeah, no. It's time to. Uh, whoa, yeah. Oh, 
that's all it. Cool. Yeah. Till next time, take care. Ciao.